Howdy and welcome back. This is Athelred, the worst Civ player on YouTube. Let's play some Civ. So in the last game, I managed to prove myself as the worst Civ player on YouTube by establishing the city of York, which is a miserable little town. It's completely undefensible despite being a frontier city. And it has, it does have a luxury resource to pay for itself. However, it also has a marsh. Precious little in the way of production, if anything. And um, I'm really, I'm really regretting having settled York, but it is what it is, so we're going to go on with our lives. We'll scout the scenario a little bit. We do want to check out France and Spain's territories, try to establish control over it, get more settlers out, get all of our cities up. And once all of our cities are up, we're going to go for a national college. So those are going to be our short-term strategic goals, as well as exploring to find somebody else in this game. There's got to be somebody. So speaking of somebody, let's go looking for barbarians. We'll also set our cities to production focus, so any new citizens will go right onto production. And next turn. So... Hmm, this archer, I sent him here to protect York. I think instead I'm going to use him to scout and find barbarians. I think that the, the goal right now is to 15 gold. Some other civilization has discovered these people besides me. The goal here right now, I think, is to explore France and Spain's territory and set up our cities. So religion enhanced. We will be getting a religion soon. What did they get? Eastern Orthodoxy? Well, fine. All right, speaking of barbarians, got ourselves a spearman here. We'll see how quickly we can deal with that. And let's come up north here, check out our island, my island, and see if there's anyone here we can do anything about. In 1150 BC, the... Middle Eastern empires went through a period of turmoil, and I'm referring to Babylon, yeah. Persia, etc. There were there were massive wars, economic collapse, unsettled people, and what you had was a mass migration of individuals out of the affected territories through Asia Minor into. Eastern Europe, across Europe, westward across Europe, until you get here to Northern Europe, and then crossing the channel and moving into Southern Britain, where they had a bit of a cultural impact on the locals. Our archaeological evidence is that there was an influx of culture from Northern Europe. These as we mentioned earlier, they were all Celts, or as the Romans referred to them, they were all Gauls. But there had been separation for a few thousand years because of the English Channel. At this time, you see the overlaying of those cultures, one on top of another, here in southern Britain. So, what do we have here? We've got barbarians. I don't... I'm not going to deal with barbarians using a scout, so we're going to retreat. And, hallelujah, no pun intended, we have got a faith. What do we get? We're going to be Catholic. Because during the Anglo-Saxon years, Britain was a staunchly Catholic country. It converted very effectively to Catholicism. So we will be Catholic. And look, we can get tithe. Can we get pagodas? You know what? This game's not so bad after all. We just got Tithe and Pagodas. We can blame that on the AI not knowing which aspects of religion are the strongest. So, Archer bombarded my Spearman. Um, yes, I guess that would be this away right here. This scout is going to die. Oh, look. Here's a city spot. Dies. Mountain. If we got if we settled right here, we'd have the mountain for an observatory. Dies for its luxury to pay off itself. 
two river systems here. Uh, it would be on a hill. It would have another hill it can mine. It would have horses. And it would have a stone quarry. That right there is a gorgeous looking spot. So let's camp it and heal up our scout. Oh, looky here. Barbarians. I bet if we just fortify this spot, those barbarians will come to us. Next turn. We're unhappy, and I'm unhappy that we're unhappy, but there's nothing I can do about that until we drain this marsh and set up a plantation over here to get the sugar. So, there. We've got units moving around. Trying, the scout's just trying to stay alive while this archer maybe will do some sweep and clear. Oh, speaking of sweep and clear, let's get barrage. And voila. We'll get barrage on our warrior who just got promoted as well. Let's not fortify him. Let's fortify until healed. And it's obvious that Spain's not down here, so... I think I'm going to put off any further scouting of Spain and head through Zurich to see what I can find over there. Son of a gun! Do I get... Will I get another... Yeah, I'll be able to get more XP off of this, so... I guess I'm basically farming XP off the barbarians. You know, always look on the bright side, stuff like that. But we'll need to... Actually, another thing is... My archer will be here in a few turns, about the same time that this settler is crossing. So I'll be able to pick up the settler right here, escort him down here. That'll work out nicely. And that will be my third city spot. Normally, I don't do more than three or four cities as tradition. Although, in this game with so much territory, I may end up going a little wider. Five, maybe six cities. I'm feeling five or six. Oh, great. So, what tiles do we have here that we can work? Well, this is not as bad as I thought. They've got two hills. I'll be able... Can I buy one? This one. This is a hill, right? Yes. 135. We can buy that. All right. Let's go set up a mine there. And then York will not be quite as bad off as I had thought. Yeah, we may be able to make something out of York after all. Okay. There. There's 37 gold. And a barbarian encampment cleared. Anything else? Okay. We will actually come right through here with our settler. And hopefully no barbarians will jump out of the bushes and attack. That's all we need. So let's see. We we know where the Vikings are. Hmm. Social policy time. Do we go with faster growth or more happiness? Well, the next city I f plant, we're going to have dyes to offset its unhappiness. We could also get some gold. But I think I'm going to go with extra growth to help offset the lag in technology that I know I must be suffering. Okay, where did these barbarians go? I'm feeling a little leery now. So, 725, I think something happened in 750. Yeah, it did. Britain entered the Iron Age, which revolutionized agriculture for them, because now they were able to build iron plows, iron shovels, etc. They could work the land much more effectively. And you also saw, as a result of this, a boom in population, which resulted in there being a greater population density. And there started to be some competition for land. You see people starting to do things like building um, stone fences, saying, you know, this side of the fence is mine, that side of the fence is yours, you stay on your property. So you start to see some of the division of territory in Britain at that time. So that's 750, and one of these days I'm going to have to get trapping in order to pay f for all of these bison that we've got.
All right, we will just escort this settler down here to his new spot and hello Vatican City you are basically where I would expect you to be I I like playing on this earth map I mean it's meta gaming of me to a certain degree that that I kinda know well where's France where's Spain or at least I would if they were actually there I do know that somewhere down about here is going to be the Rock of Gibraltar. So I do have some, I guess, quasi-cheating metagame knowledge. But, but there's so much fun to be had in playing on the Earth. I mean, Vatican City is right here where Vatican City is. That's cool. London is right where London is. And do we not have any city-state quests? Where are all of the civilizations? Okay, I'm sorry, Vatican. I didn't mean to upset you. Trireme is done. Let's get a granary. I think we should have granaries everywhere. I don't think that that's asking for too much out of my cities, is to have a granary everywhere. And let's go see if we can find Africa and see if maybe Arabia, Morocco, someplace, somebody like that's down there. In the meantime, we'll see if we can get down into... Well, let's see, is Russia over here? Or Austria or somebody? No, another city-state. Goodness gracious, city-states. So we'll set this guy right onto production and do a build order of Granary Library Shrine. And we will... Um, yeah, let's go scout a little bit. So yeah, I'm... I'm starting to wonder, maybe everybody's... Maybe everyone's in Asia, Africa, and the Americas. Which, is it a good thing? Ow, look at this. I should deal with this barbarian galley before I try to get by those... Crossbowman. Hello, is any... Aha! I really dislike you. You... I have, a gr I have an axe to grind with you. And I will grind that axe on you. So that's good to know. So the Ottomans are here. Okay. A bunch of barbarians. Hmm. Lovely. We will have to be careful with these barbarians. But hey, look! I'm actually first in the rankings uh, by points. I'm anxious to come over here. Okay, yeah, this is going to be this is going to be kind of chancy. Let's try to sneak by. We did it. 500 BC. I think something happened. Yeah. Okay. So I just have a note on here to talk about the languages. And that is, as I mentioned earlier, it's a Celtic-derived language called Brythonic. And, no, I'm surely not going to tell you where I live. Brythonic, yeah, so this was an analytical language. What's meant by that? That means that the a lot of the meaning of the sentence is folded into the order of the words. For instance, the man chased the cat, and the cat chased the man. These are entirely different sentences. They mean completely different things. But it's the same three words, just in a different order. That's an example of an analytical language at work. Now, the other major type of language is what's called a synthetic language. And... That is where you fold a lot of the meaning into the conjugation of the words. And the go-to example here is, there's Gibraltar. The go-to example here is, in Latin, you have the word amor, which means love, right? And if you conjugate it amo, then that's... I love, if you conjugate it amas, then that's uh, you love, and amat is he loves. So you get the old song that we used to sing in Latin class, 
Amo, amas, samat, amama, samati, samant. So those are all of the different conjugations of amor in Latin. So that's a synthetic language. And Latin, which gets exported throughout most of this portion of the world, thanks to the Romans, is a purely synthetic language, purely. You can put those words in any order that you want. Now, in contrast, Brythonic was a purely analytical language. Eventually, these languages overlay one another during the Normandy invasions. And I really don't want to lose this archer. I mean, I really, really, really don't want to lose this archer. So, golly, but there's a lot of city-states. A lot of city-states. Um... I got distracted by this by this archer over here. Please don't die. Please don't die. Please. I don't think that they can. They can't move and. Can they move and fire? Don't don't die. Okay, heal up. Can I actually get you back to town? Uh, what was I saying? Yes, with um the Normandy invasions of of uh, the the Normandy conquerors of 1066 in Britain. You get the two languages overlaying over once one, one another and that's how you end up with such a mess of a language like English. All right, York. Very good. You've got a granary. That's thrilling. Let's do the same build order here for the library and the shrine. And for research, let's get trapping for the bison. Now, what part of the world is this that I just explored? I don't rightly know, honestly. Um, that's not Asia Minor, right? Oh, that's Greece. That's Greece. Alexander's not in this. Okay. All right. What about uh, down here? North Africa. Egypt. This, is, this would be Egypt, right? So what, there's no Morocco? Aha, Ethiopia's in this. Another nation that I have an axe to grind with. Well, really, at this point, I've played this game long enough. I've been playing it basically since it came out. And I still suck at it. But I've got an axe to grind with just about every civilization at this point. At least I'm meeting people. All right, I think this is Asia Minor. Which, yeah, that's where the Ottomans live. So that makes sense. London has finished a granary. We've got, this is a really difficult uh, decision on, on a build order here. I want a Colossus. I want a cargo ship. I want to start trading, but at the same time, I have such an anemic military, I can't even deal with barbarians. So I feel I should buy archers or build archers. And the reason why I'm going for archers is because they will eventually upgrade to longbowmen. So if I can get, you know, say an archer into each one of these cities and then those will upgrade to longbowmen eventually. And that that would be dandy. And also I then I need to get workers out because I have an insufficient quantity of workers. I I may have though been able to do the minimum here for York, which is well, no, not quite the minimum. I should I should do something for a farm here. And then this worker will have to come down here and improve this this die right here. In fact, if I don't see but I'm I'm shy to move down there. I want to, but I have no faith that I won't come across the barbarian on the way. Yeah, that's too dangerous. So, I'll just have to stay local to York until I can do something with this archer to clear the way. All right, how much time do we have left in this episode? Okay, we've still got a while. We will fortify this archer until he's healed. It's 395. So, a little bit about how the Britons are living at this point. They are living in tribes. And they are represented and led by chieftains. Ah, the Arabs are here. We are meeting people now. There are people in this game besides us. I'm feeling much more like this is a regular game now. Hallelujah. Okay. So, let's see if we can get around you guys. 
right here. And then here. Okay, there's Baghdad. That's um That's not exactly where I would expect Baghdad, right? Is it? Okay, well, that's fine, whatever. So can I no, I can't clear this camp this turn. I have a feeling that they're going to do something like spawn a unit, so I will fortify that unit up there. We are now at zero happiness because London grew. We got horses at Nottingham. Barbarian encampment was found over there. Next turn. Very good. Look, they've even got a road. Oh man, I kind of envy your road. You're so first, first, um, first world country compared to us. We don't even have roads. So this trireme, I think, is done with the Mediterranean. I'm going to bring him back to Nottingham, heal him up a little bit, and then send him around the coast of Africa. Meanwhile, we're going to land this scout here. Wow, holy smokes. Well, the Still Ottomans? That's a lot of territory for the Ottomans. Who else might we be able to find? Oh, and look, the Arabs have trade have trade caravans going. I guess I'm not surprised. They're probably rich too. Next turn. And no, I'm not going to tell you where I am because really at this point you could just waltz over and kill me. I have no military whatsoever. So met a new city-state. People are entering the medieval era. And we almost had killed this unit over here. Let's go see if we can finish that. Mm -hmm. Yes. This archer will come over to York and escort this worker down to get the dies. That's what we'll do. Next. 335 BC. Anything happening? Nothing until 200. Besides Even the fact case. that... The British tribes were warring amongst each other profusely at this point. The construction of causeway enclosures peaks. So do I want another archer? How many archers do we have? One, two, yes, I do want another archer. And for research, we'll do the wheel. And we will move into the desert. No man lives in the desert and no man needs nothing. Is that how that saying goes? I probably mangled that. All right, well, let's bring our warrior back to London. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow, that hurt. Much pain and suffering. Yes, but we're back safe to Nottingham. And who grew? York. So York is wisely prioritizing the buffalo. Very good. In fact, now that I've got trapping, I can go set... If I wasn't unhappy, I would go set up a camp on those... On those buffalo right now. Right. So let's get these guys all back together. Right about like that. And there's that archer unit I never finished earlier. We will fortify this trireme just until he heals, so he can scout Africa for us. So, bets on whether or not we can pull off a win in this game. I'm feeling like it's extremely unlikely, honestly. I, I don't see it happening. But, we're having fun anyway, because we get to explore the British history. And, wow, that's... That's a lot of barbarians. That's some serious numbers of barbarians. Can I? How far can I move? Um, wow, this is this is very unfortunate. I could die next turn. Uh, I don't want to lose my scout. So, can we talk to Arabia and get open borders? I don't think so, because neither one of us has civil service yet. So how do I not lose my scout in this situation? I, 
it's not in my interest to attack either one of these units. Honestly, I can't run because I'm zone of controlled. I could fortify here and make myself a harder target, although I'm still a pretty easy target, especially since that's a barbarian horseman and that's a ranged unit. I'm going to guess a couple of things. Next turn, this warrior is going to clear this camp, liberating this worker. I'm going to guess that that will happen on the Arab's turn, which comes before the Barbarian's turn, so this unit will be greatly damaged. This horseman will attack this warrior, killing it. This hand axe will hit me because this horseman will have killed this hand axe. He will be in this tile, and that will enable me to escape. So that's Sherlock Holmes on that situation there. Let's see how that plays out. How many turns until this farm? One turn. We will just do nothing for a turn. And what happens down here? Wow. That went almost ex that 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 went pretty well. Um we're I would normally go with scouting range, but this is pretty dicey down here. I'm feeling like I need survivalism. I wish I could save my promotion. Um, I need to get out of here. That worker is very tempting to me. How far can I? How far can I get away from here? So. I can put some real territory between me and that horseman. I can get out of that horseman's line of sight. I think I'm going to do that. And I can't do anything with that worker anyway. So, hey, there's the Tigris and Euphrates. We have found Mesopotamia. That is where Babylon would be if they were in the game. Now, at this point, I... I think I can get away from this hand axe, so I'm going to go with the scouting range. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Look at that wheat! Oh, and there's citrus up here. That's a beautiful spot. Okay, so let's start moving our worker. And we'll fortify him a little bit. He's got two levels of barrage, so he's a pretty nice archer. I don't want to fall, but I probably am going to fall on the rankings because I don't see myself being able to do anything dramatic about my situation anytime soon. Ugh. Okay, really, we can get away. We can get away. Right? That's not getting away. Let's skip a turn and watch our scout. Horseman, go away, go away. He probably can't see me because he doesn't have the enhanced visibility. Go away, horsey. Leave. Oh, yeah, unit needs, okay, fine. Next. Go away, go away, go away. Shoo, shoo horse. Beat it. Damn. Oh, wow. That sucks. Oh, that blows. Okay. That is what it is. That, that really hurt. Okay. We'll deal with it. We'll scout with triremes. We'll get another scout out one of these days. Scouts, they're gonna die. I mean, that, that kind of thing is to be expected. We can't let that ruin the game for us. So... <laughs> what technology do we pick up next? Um, construction? That would be a real upgrade for all of our archers. So I'm thinking that's an easy choice. And 
will move just like this. Stacked unit, this archer is going to come across to York. And look, my trireme is done getting healed up. So we are going to go back scouting again. Hallelujah. This really, this, this is how scouting is done. And we're going to step a little bit closer. Is this a hill? Are there hills over here? This is a hill. That's a hill too. Okay. So that's the lay of that land. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Very fair. So we'll be able to upgrade him to a spearman, can't we? A swordsman. I'm surprised by that. I can't upgrade that. Oh, because I need the iron. Okay, fine. Yeah, I will not be able to upgrade him. Oh, and look at that. I am glad I escorted this worker closely. And there is the camp. I think we can deal with that now. So... Are there any city-state quests that we can do anything about? Valetta? They're nowhere nearby. I guess it would show up here, right? The other one is Yerevan. They're nowhere nearby. Well... That is the timer, which means that we have come to the point where we need to make a cut. Um, I don't see any builds that are going to finish anytime soon. I don't want to just leave my unit sitting around doing nothing, but there's no city-state quest. Actually, you know what I could do with this archer is I could have him, I could have him go scat a little bit. So that's not altogether bad. Okay, so, no embassies for you guys. As far as I know, nobody knows where London is. And thank you very much for watching. I appreciate the time that you've spent listening to me ramble about history and scouting and being alone in this giant map. So if you liked the episode... Or if you didn't like it, really, either's fine. Thumbs up, thumbs down, there's buttons for all that. Subscribe if you'd like to hear anything else like this. I will be doing an entire series on English history. We'll go through the Roman occupation. We're going to go through the Anglo-Saxon invasions, the eventual unification of England, and then, you know, the Renaissance period, Elizabeth I, World War One, World War Two, all the way up to David Cameron and beyond. So... I should stop talking and end the episode. Thank you very much.